Hello, welcome to St. Francis de Sales. Uh, my name is Ed Watson, I'm the youth minister here uh, and the vice principal for the school and uh, we just wanted to change things up a little bit. Um, Grace Wright is our middle school minister and she and I and some special guests have come in and we've been working on doing teaching Tuesdays and formation Fridays to kind of in this uncertain time give you more uh, to serve you better so that you can continue to grow in faith, grow in fellowship, grow in your understanding of the Lord. Uh, and here we find ourselves in the midst of Holy Week. And for the last several weeks and days, I have just been in a situation where, and I'm sure you've been there too. I don't even know what day it is. I don't even know what day it is. I don't know what's going on. I've got my kids that are doing school. I've got my wife who is working and somehow, you know, still managing to, uh, to move around and, and we're expecting our son and it just all seems to come together. Um, and so I thought it would be a good idea for us to pause and take a breath and to see where we are. So Father's homily brought us in Palm Sunday. In Holy Week, we, it's easy for us to forget that these are actual historical events that actually took place. So our Lord enters Jerusalem triumphantly. People are celebrating. They're waving palm branches. And they are excited to see the guy that they recognize now as the Messiah. And then we have a couple of other things that happen, you know. Then Jesus comes and he cleanses the temple and he gets the money changers out. And that really upsets a lot of people um, because they can't really see what he's doing. They just see him upsetting what they consider to be normal. Uh, and then on Tuesday, uh, our Lord is staying in Bethany just right outside of Jerusalem. And he's at the house of Simon the leper. And if you look in the Gospel of Matthew, he talks a little bit about this. Simon was a man who was cleansed of leprosy. He was a friend of Jesus. Um, he's in the town where Lazarus and Mary and Martha uh, lived and where they grew up. And it's the place where Lazarus was buried and there's a place where he rose from the dead. And I was looking at this, I was thinking to myself, in scripture and in life, there are no ordinary characters. Simon the leper is a name that is thrown out maybe one time. But he has a real relationship with our Lord. Our Lord sat down and broke bread with him. Mary and Martha, the, the sisters of Lazarus, their, their story's told earlier on. They talk about how Martha you know, prepares a dinner and Mary sits at the Lord's feet. Well, here we have another opportunity where our Lord comes to visit, and it's right after he's brought Lazarus back from the dead. And so, I mean, he is VIP, top of the list kind of guy. And so they bring him in, and they've got all these friends and family coming in. They all want to see Jesus. And here comes Mary. In the time since Lazarus was raised, she's gone out and she's gotten this little alabaster jar of expensive perfume, uh, perfumed oil. And she takes it, and she goes to our Lord's feet. And you got to remember, everybody was walking around in sandals in those days, and any travel they were doing was by foot. And so it was a common thing for when you entered a home into Jerusalem for you to clean off your feet, to get the dust of the road off. And while Jesus is there reclining at table, Mary comes in and she washes his feet with her tears. She dries his feet with her hair and she anoints them with an oil that is so expensive that if you were to go to buy it, it would cost much of a year's wages. There are no ordinary characters in Scripture. She gives our Lord everything that she has. And there are no ordinary moments in Scripture because we hear from Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, the beginning of his turn. The first thing he says is not what a beautiful sign or what a wonderful gift, but gosh, couldn't we have used that? Couldn't you have given me that money and then we could have given it to the poor? Couldn't couldn't we have given something a little bit less to our Lord? And at this time where we are spending time away from, from Mass, from confession, where we don't have that easy access to our Lord, it would be easy for us to give Him less. But at this time, we're called to follow in the steps of Mary, the sister of Lazarus, to give Him more. To give Him not just a little bit of ourselves and of our hearts, but all of it. And so Judas leaves that moment. He's very upset. He goes 
and he goes to the Sanhedrin. He goes to some of Jesus' enemies. And he goes for the thing he couldn't get before. He could not get the money before, and so now he goes to them and he offers to betray our Lord to that moment. And I'm sure that we can find ourselves in Judas's shoes, in his mindset a little bit. There are times where we felt like the Lord has let us down. We find that there are times where things didn't go the way that we should or we didn't understand. We're in a situation now where this Holy Week, we're a little bit lost sometimes. We're a little bit off. But what route are we going to take? Are we going to take the route of Judas, who arcs away from our Lord, who arcs away from God's plan? Or are we going to take the, the, the path of Mary, who gives absolutely everything she can to Jesus? The man who's changed her life in a way that she can't describe or, or, uh, or pay him back for, and she humbles herself and gives herself, gives all of herself to him washing his feet with her very hair and with her tears, anointing him with oil. So as we come into our Holy Week, we want to follow that path that Martha set out. We just say, Lord, allow me to give more of myself, more of my time, more of my will to you, so that at the end of this, I can celebrate your resurrection in the same way that your followers. Never gonna 